Hi, I'm Tommy. And I'm Luke. Uh, we are the co-founders of The Sea Files, your coronavirus quarantine comedic relief. This week we're reviewing 2020's The Invisible Man, written and directed by Lee Winnell. You may also know you know, also may also know him from 2004's Saw and 2010's Insidious. He actually starred in Saw um, and made cameo roles in multiple films, including Aquaman. Yeah, so this movie he is re- is ba- is a remake of the nineteen thirty three Universal classic, uh, the nineteen thirty three's Invis- the Invisible Invisible Man. I think it holds up. I like it a lot. I like this movie a lot. It's very good. You can't compare it to um, the original film, though. I don't think the Invisible the first original movie is good. I think this is better. Seriously. I mean, no, it's good. It's a yeah. I like this one a lot. This is arguably my favorite horror movie. It's ex- expertly directed, acted, and written. Uh, yeah, uh, you can't deny that um, what? Lee Winnell and Elizabeth Moss uh, make this bring movie. this together. They, yeah, they they give it one hundred percent, and you can really tell. Yeah, you can you can one hundred percent tell that this was the work of a project that took its time, but in the end, it was worth it. Yeah, um, I was quite worried because after um the the tw- the Tom Cruise's The Mummy flop, there was also rumors of a Invisible Man with Johnny Depp, which I really wouldn't mind, just because I think it'd be kind of funny. Yeah, but he was wearing his Willy Wonka hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that there was that, and I believe there's a movie in the works, which is an Invisible Woman with Javier. Javier Bardem. Yeah, um, I think that The Invisible Woman should have been something, a project like this one. I think it should be a follow-on to this, but I... I don't think, I don't know, because I don't feel like this needs a sequel. It, it yeah. rounds itself very well, it doesn't ask too much, but it doesn't give too much either. It, it doesn't over-explain. I, I like that. I don't feel like any film needs a sequel apart from like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, but the, I do this, feel like this definitely opens up for a sequel. I don't really think so because it doesn't it doesn't leave any questions hanging. It kind of explains everything you really actually need to know and doesn't and it doesn't really explain anything else. It's nice in that way. So at the beginning of the film. The character, main character, Cecilia, um, it, she's shown to like escape back. She's she's escape she's escaping from her abusive boyfriend Adrian's house. Yeah, so she packs her bag. And actually, no, she, this... no, it shows she has her bag packed. Actually, I really like this scene because it says so much, but it it, do, it shows so much, explaining so much without having to go into details. Like it has a, it's direct in a way and I, it's shot in a way and you can tell that that house like it isn't hers it's it's her boyfriend's and she he, she's getting away and like she has no control over anything. Well, yeah, it's not shot like a home sequence normally would. It's it's shot like something out of uh, like the Great a, Escape a Break film. Yeah, it's it's very well done and um I, it also I like how it explains how. Like, this character, she's not dumb. Like, she's a smart character. Like, it shows how she's already... she's hit, She's got a bag ready. She's hidden it. Like, it shows how she knows where all the cameras are in the house. Um, she's, pre- she's prepared, like, everything so far. And, like, yeah, I think that was very smart. Yeah, and it also, she knows everything about the house. She's really worked on it. She knows where all the cameras are. She knows all the padlock pins to disable everything. She's really planned it out. And what I like about that is it shows that she can show initiative and that she can work things out to her own accord. Another thing I liked is um, I didn't actually notice this until someone pointed out. There's something in the original movies and they do this thing where they have long like, sh- sweeping shots of a room. So how big it is. It, the film opens with a like a sweeping shot of their bedroom, and I think that really helps it seem like a Universal uh, film, like one of those old Universal monster films. And uh, I, 
it kind of points to that a lot in throughout the movie, like copying shots from old Universal films. What I felt about the film was that when the Invisible Man is in a room, it will do a long shot, and it won't even be on the main character. They'll be in a that it it won't focus on that. It will focus on where we're supposed to believe the Invisible Man is at that point. So they'll have one where it's just focusing at one point, and they'll just focus, and you can just hear everyone else talking in the background. But this point will be focusing on where the Invisible Man is supposed to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the movie opens with uh, Cecilia escaping from her house, and um, it's re- very well done, and it's, it, it very well sets up like the, the structure of the house, so you kind of know where everything is. Yeah. And there's a, another great shot where she's running down this hit from the house down a hill and this is a very big house just a big very nice house very modern and she's running kind of down like a, a light hill and is another thing i liked it was um in a lot of you older universal movies it's like a castle on a hill and someone running down it and i like that again it's a big house on a hill and she's running away from it and i like that a lot yeah this could be a nod to um the film dracula um, when or like there's... House of Dracula or House of Frankenstein, just like those old, those old like haunted houses movies from in, the thirties. In the original Dracula film, they had a house. It was a castle, Castle Transylvania, but it was just in the middle of nowhere. And I feel that this has interpreted that in a different way. It's it still does feel like it's cut off from the rest of the world. It feels like. It's, it's outside. Place. It's it's on the cliffs, I think, in Boston. Or I don't know how geographically correct that is. I might I I saw this uh, like a week ago. Um, yeah. So she escapes and she meets up with her sister, Emily. Um, Emily. I and think she, that she's a very strong character. Emily is a very well done character. She's, I I think she she's acted very well. I I'm gonna check check who played her. Uh, let me check. Okay, yeah, so she's acted and played very well, um, and when she gets there, she has no idea what's going on, and she, she asks, she's just told to drive, 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 and there's a great shot, and there's a great shot of, and you see uh, Adrian, the boyfriend, he runs out of the woods, and he just, like, he punches through the car window, and he starts chasing the car, and yeah. shouting, and then, yeah, it's, it's, it's very... There's a shot where the car is just fading off into the distance, and Adrian sees this pill bottle. There's a pill bottle. She drops a pill bottle, which she used to drug Adrian, so she could escape. Yeah, this she found. She, he finds this pill bottle on the ground, and then that cut. That, that that that'll come back later. That will um, come back. Um. So it, the next shot is of her staring out a window at her friend's house. She's. Um, oh, she's a, a, there's a, there's a cop called James, and she... Yeah, he's James, played by Alice, uh, Al, Aldis Hodge, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who um, is very good in this movie, I think. He's very prominent, yeah, I, I think that he's actually quite cool. Yeah, he's, he's a very good character who's like, the, he's, he's like the rock to uh, Cecilia. Who always seems to be like, like on edge throughout this entire movie, and I yeah, thought that he's, was um, very well done. He's definitely the muscle man of the film. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he that he is really buff. He's like in insanely muscly guy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, he um, plays a cop friend of Cecilia. Yeah, Cecilia and with. Emily, and he lives with his daughter. I can't remember her yes, name. Yes, Sydney. Sydney. Oh, Sydney, yeah. Well, I should remember that. They shout it so much in the film. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so what I liked a lot about the movie, it shows she is, she's a terrified of Adrian. Uh, she, she's a bit she, where she, she, says she is he, obviously suffering from paranoia PTSD. and post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, PTSD. Um, and because there's a bit where she, she goes outside to collect the mail because she's just kind of working outside more and more because she's terrified of Adrian. And there's a runner, and he's just running past her, and she, she hears ev- and it. The sound design is very good. Like you just heard, like, and the sounds getting louder and louder and louder. And uh, as it passes her, she runs inside, but then realizes it wasn't Adrian; it was just some guy. The thing and is, I think that was very well done. The way it's done, it makes us feel like 
we're Cecilia, and this it makes us feel like this bike guy is actually, yeah. I mean, a recycle. I mean, this runner is actually a threat, when really, he's just a figment of Celia's imagination. Torturing well, he's not. Her. Yeah, basically, um, the movie that the movie has very good sound design. I don't know who did it, but it was it was very well done. Yeah, I, I love how it kind of s- washes between real sound and like just like kind of outside noises. Um, but not even noises that would be there, like noises like not even like a jump scare noise, like noises that just really tell what emotion the character's feeling at that point. Yeah, yeah. it was very well done. Um, so, so um, she so then she's called in by Tom Griffin, Adrian's brother. Yeah, and, and she finds out that Adrian has killed himself. Supposedly, supposedly, Adrian has killed himself, and it, it, I, I generally thought for a bit maybe he had because, like, um, his brother shows pictures of him, which I don't know if you you can do that. Like, can you show pictures of a dead body? Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's it's his wife. I think she deserves to. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like, like yeah. So she finds out Adrian has died, and she's left him. She's left a. Five million dollars, which will be paid every month for about, I think it said twenty, like next twenty years. Yeah, um, no, sorry, it, it's five thousand dollars every m- month for the next like few years. For, it was forty years. Yeah, so it's a lot of money. Um, so she she decides and that, that I've heard is actually uh, that is a trick by a uh, abusive boyfriend, which like they give them money and it's like even like I'm giving you stuff, I'm sustain sustaining you. I am why you have what you have. And why would you uh, blame me? Psych- it's like a psychological He's making um, himself torture. look better. Yeah. Um, to set this up. But anyway, um, so goes back home. And, and I, I actually, I like this scene a lot. It, um, it shows, so she gets a ladder because, um, what's, what's his name? Um, Sydney. James, who she's, the cop friend she's staying with, ha- is p- repainting his house and she gets him a ladder and uh, they're kind of like, okay, thanks. And then she says, oh, um, you can use it to uh, find things. And she looks up and it's like, oh, what's that? And she's put an um, envelope on the top of the cabinet. And she gets it and it's a envelope full of money for Sydney's um, tuition, uh, college, college tuition. College funds. College, yeah, college tuition. Um, and um, it just, it's a very cute, well done scene, which really shows the chemistry between the actors. And I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, um, I really liked that scene because... I felt that Sydney and um, Cecilia were going to be friends. Um, and I felt that although, I mean, if I was faced with that much money, I don't know, I'd probably run off. <laughs> it just shows that she is loyal to this family and yeah, she's, she cares she's, about them. She cares about them a lot. It's like, And there was also, there's one thing I noticed and there was a uh, shot and it was weirdly, it was down like a corridor a bit. And it, f- it took me a second to work out what it was. It was a POV shot from The Invisible Man, and it just tells you that Adrian is there, The Invisible Man is there. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's well done in that way. Um, yeah, so then she... Uh, what did she do? She takes out the trash, doesn't she? And while she's standing outside, she breathes, and you see another puff of air coming out from just behind her. And you slowly realise that she's not alone. There's someone standing right behind her, just watching her. And that, and she she does hear them. And that's kind of when she realises that Adrian's not dead. He's very much alive and he's watching her. Yeah. So, yeah. And the bit where I think she fully finds out that Adrian is there is um, a scene where it's in the middle of the night and she and S- she and Sydney are sleeping in the same bed and she's woken up to a phone and the phone's just floating. Yeah, and you just you just see the camera flashes. Yeah, and uh, so the Adrian had pulled her covers back, so she she gets out of bed and she thinks she sees him sits someone sitting 
in the in the chair in the corner of the room, and it's a nod to the original where um, he is sitting in this chair, and you can, you can basically see his bum outline in the chair. Um, yeah. So she she throws the covers over him, and it's, he's not there, obviously. And so she she starts she drags the covers on the floor, and she starts to walk back to her bed, and suddenly it's it's a great great scare and because the covers they suddenly go taut they suddenly like come stiff and she looks down and she sees two like footprints like pushing down on the cup co- at the end of the covers yeah stopping her from uh pulling it towards the bed and she starts to freak ring. out yeah really but she freaks out and uh james runs in and turns the lights on and sydney wakes up and they they both just think she's ter- she's par- paranoid and just uh still terrified of adrian and they assure her that he's dead, and uh, they'll go to see her brother in the mo- see her brother in the morning, because she insists on it. And she even feels like um, it's okay. I, I think at that point, she even yeah, she feels like sh- she will get she'll get this sorted out. Like she 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 know, she'll sort this out. Um, yeah. So she she goes to um the next morning she goes to where to her brothers. To Tim, J- A- J- Adrian's brother, and she says to him, she basically says to him, "I know he's become invisible. Tell him to stop." Mm-hmm. And he says, and "He says I know he's alive," and uh, blah blah blah. And he, and... he, basically, he has the, the smarmiest line. He just says, "Well, well I ha- well, I have a um, an urn in the corner of the room, and he points to an urn that would disagree with you." Yeah, um, he he's not very um, supportive of the fact that she's been through quite a lot of trauma. Even well, if he doesn't want to believe about the Invisible Man, he he um he says, "Well, I I know what you're going through because um, Adrian he tormented me as well. He was my uh, older brother, and he had just had a way, and he'd torment me. And when I found out he died, I was happy. And he he's just like the most smarmy character ever." He's like, well, he's like one of those uh, businessmen who say, sign here, uh, and then ends up ripping your life apart. Yeah, that, he's, he's that character. He's horrible. Did you watch The Founder? Uh, no, I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> um, it's all about this guy, and he just basically rips this family business apart. Yeah. And the way he does it doesn't even make him look like a bad guy. It just yeah. makes him look like a businessman, which is actually what he is. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah, so no one really believes um Cecilia. So she goes to her sister's house, and this scene is wrecking. I think she 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 knocks on the door, and Emily is shocked to see her, and she like tells her to go away, and she's like, "What, Cecilia? This this bit I didn't love because what happens is um Cecilia's sister, uh Emily, I think her name is. Yeah, she, she says. Uh, I thought you didn't want to talk to me, and she and so she does like what? And she said she says she showed sent her an email uh, that like just said I hate you, I wish you were dead, and st- like all that, and it's horrible. And, yeah. Um, she, yeah. And that, she ends she, up shutting the door on her. She shuts the door on her, and uh, Cecilia just kind of goes home, and she goes home, and she reads the email that um, Adrian sent to. Emily, she she starts to have a panic attack on the and ground, it's hot, and she like she just she falls to the ground, starts crying, and, and the, the Sydney. Sid, Sid, Sydney she comes in and it's a great scene. She's she's like, oh, we'll have girls now and that's cake and blah blah. blah. And as um, so see, as uh, Cecilia starts to get up, uh, Adrian who's in the room, he he like he hits a kid. <laughs> I know <laughs> he, he hits he hits Sydney hard across the face. And Sydney, she suddenly she starts like kind of crying, but not like loudly, and she backs off like away from Cecilia because she thinks that Cecilia just slapped her across the face. And the cop, uh, James, James, he, he, he comes is. in, and I, I, I mean, like, and it's just it's it's so sad because it's just she's wrecking her, and and James, he says, he's like, I, I feel complete, I'm completely on James' side because he, I would. He probably thinks that Cecilia just his girl, and he was just in a room where Cecilia was like, "There's invisible men." <laughs> yeah, he's just like, "Let's just get out of here." You know, we're just gonna go. So that's uh, th- this is when uh, 
it comes this... from uh, the Home Alone scene. Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah. So, um, Cecilia, and this is another point where you sh- you show that Cecilia isn't dumb. It's like she she gets a bunch of coffee grain grounds and she scatters them on the floor so oh. she'll know if Adrian comes anywhere near her because you'll see the footprints. Yeah, and then when she's all in place, she starts to like, like really powerful speech. It's about... it's very it's great acting on Elizabeth Moss's part about how like why me why me you could have anyone in the world why me and she, it's she really great... talks about the corruptness of how money can influence things that shouldn't be influenced by money like marriage and she was saying how just because he had money he he he, he had a lot of power yeah and it, just as it's... she's saying this she hears noises upstairs and well, goes... no, what, what happens is she, she calls adrian and this is again some great sound design well, after she, she hears, hears noises she decides she hears to ring him fo- she hears the phone ringing like directly above her and it's it's really well done it's really like creepy and ominous and the sound design is very good um, and then she goes up to the attic she, and she the finds attic. the phone and uh, she and she finds a knife in a plastic bag, which she mm. takes the knife out of the bag, which which don't do that. Now your fingerprints all over the knife, which isn't great. She starts to uh, look through the phone, and she finds pictures of her and and, uh, and Sydney sleeping. sleeping. Yes, yeah, it's it's, cre- it's really creepy. And, and then she she hears um like a creaking on the ladder outside because she used the ladder for painting to climb up there. And she looks down, and there's some great wide shots, and it's it's very ominous. And she and what she does is because, um, as we mentioned earlier, James is repainting his house, and she drops um, a paint basically down, and it's a great scare. It's I kind of annoyed it was in all is when it was in all the trailers. It, she drops it, and like Adrian is right in front of her. And she sees it because the paint covers it, and it's a very good sketch. I wish it wasn't spoiled by the trailer. The thing is, me, I just didn't watch the trailer. Yeah, I, I, I watched it. I mean, I really, honestly, I watched it because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have watched the movie. Really? But it, it, yeah, honestly, I, you know, why, I don't think there's any reason for it. But it was really well done. It's according to most uh, forums, actually, this is the best and the scariest film. Um, horror film so far, twenty twenty. Well, that's not exactly too high, hard a bar to uh, get because well, it's what only. The grudge it's, it's... <laughs> that is... I think that's out yet now, isn't it? That's well, the... yeah. Is that like the fifth remake? <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think it's the third. Anyway, yeah. So it's a great scare. It's really well done, and then it's an, another very tense scene where she she gets down and she follows the paint, and it eventually just like kind of stops dripping, and she's walking around and she's holding the knife from the bag she's walking around and um she's in the little kitchen area and suddenly just uh suddenly something grabs her by the neck and just, like throws her into the wall and it's a great scene it's like another jump scare yeah there's a um there's quite a big fight uh between it, the two it's a, it's a very it, good it's a very well choreographed fight i liked it a lot it, it, in the end she there's um there's a, a, there's a really good it. yeah she 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 and runs away and she I basically she gets an Uber which like arrives in like the far this is, like the fastest Uber ever. I I, I was just thinking wow an Uber can't an Uber can't arrive um until about twenty minutes in London but yeah in some <laughs> place in the middle of the countryside that couldn't yeah, arrive it was, in two. Seconds. It was it was it was really funny I thought it was um like in real life what would happen is it's just, like the Uber would circle her neighborhood a bunch. <laughs> Yeah, probably pick up. Adrian something. would get her um, way before. Yeah, so she um, she she goes to uh, the old house, Adrian's house, which I mean I don't know if she can actually do. I mean this is I mean I guess she could do it, but uh, it's yeah. So she goes to the house, and uh, she starts like just to explore, and she says to the driver, "Wait for me. I might be like twenty minutes. Can you drive me back?" Yeah. Yeah. So she she goes into the house, right? Um. Yeah. And when she's in the house, she decides uh, to have a look around, try and find out how Adrian made himself invisible. And and she, yeah, she finds this uh, suit. It's, it's a suit. And it 
it's and a machine for, that makes the suit. Yeah. Well, first, first, no, no, what happens? First, she doesn't. She just sees like a rack, and she doesn't see anything. And so she presses a button, and suddenly the suit becomes visible again, and it's it's a really cool scene. Like, and um, it's like tons of tiny hexagonal cameras on the suit, and they're just suddenly becoming visible, and it's actually a really cool scene. What, what I prefer about this Invisible Man film is that in the original film, he, he, it was he's butt naked. <laughs> Also, he's he's got a um he drunk he drank a potion. To yeah, and he, he he drank a potion, and he's base he's butt naked throughout the entire movie. And it's just a bit disturbing, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't want that guy trying to just, like jump on funny. Like, throughout the entire movie, it's just him threatening to get undressed. <laughs> it's like, like don't you make come me once this. you come one step closer, and I shall take off my shirt. <laughs> And the thing is about um this one is that I know you can't be invisible, but I'm sure that future technology would look like that. It would have cameras. Yeah, this te- the technology it, it makes like it, it makes a decent logical sense, and I'm that's, I'm sure there's reasons it wouldn't work in the real world, but it makes decent sense. Like um because what it is is on one they're on their tiny hexagonal cameras, and they have a camera and a screen on the same thing, so it's a camera. Which is connected to the camera directly behind it, uh, so you're just seeing a screen of what's behind you, and it's just him covered in tiny, tons of tiny screens, which uh, show what's behind him. And I think it's, that's really cool. The problem is, as well as the cameras, you would have to have a monitor that, that would project it, so it still wouldn't work. Yeah, but it's it's, it's very cool. It's a cool idea. I like it a lot. Yeah. So then, what happens she, is she hears she, a noise. Well, she and... hears her dog. We forgot to mention the dog. There is oh, the, a dog, dog in this movie, and it's a cute dog. It's like, it's and cool... it somehow survived for two weeks <laughs> yeah. in the house. <laughs> we're, not, we're just not going to explain that part. Um, yeah, so the dog starts barking, and she goes up. And, and she starts to hear some noises. She hides in the cupboard. What, no, what she, does, she, she takes the suit, she takes the suit, and she hides it in the cupboard. Right, and that I mean, I make sense. It makes sense later in the film, but then I'm like, why? But yeah, it makes sense because uh, what would happen is if she, if Adrian got her with the suit, she's never getting that suit back, you know? Yeah. So that that I think was very well done. I think she, it's another way she shows uh, how she, like she's not a dumb character. And then there's this awesome fight. There's a fight in, in the cupboard. <laughs> it, I mean, it's in the cupboard and kind of leads out the house. And it, and it, it, it's it's very well done. It's stylized, and um, it's not as long as the first fight in the kitchen. Uh, but it's it's a similar sort of style. Her running off and jumping in an Uber. Yeah. Uh, so she 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 gets to the Uber, and she calls her sister and says, "I'm really sorry. Please meet me at this restaurant. I know you don't want to talk to me, but I need to see you now, and I have evidence which will show what I'm seeing." Yeah. And the next, so she meets her sister. At the, she meets her sister at the restaurant. And Emily, and she starts cool saying how person. she's yeah. like she's like bossing around the waiters. Yeah, oh, I know this. Place. It's, it's it's I I know this, I know the exact place. It's like well, we do things kind of different here, and like uh, Emily's like, look, sure, great. Um, can you give me some water, please? And it's great. Um, and Cecilia starts talking about how like Emily, she's so strong, and when I'm on your side, I feel safe. When I'm against you, I feel like basically terrified. And she says, I just need you to trust me here and listen to what I say. So, she And starts... th- this is the, the first moment when I really think that... I really think that someone's actually going to listen. And it just annoys me what happens. It is just so heartbreaking, the scene. Um, so she, says, she starts to explain. She says, and she the... tells her about the suit. And just as she says this, the knife on this, her table... This knife rises. just kind of like... It jumps up really quickly, floats, like, and like, it just flies the most... in the air into the, Emily's hand, into Cecilia's hand. She looks at Emily and suddenly realizes Emily's throat has been slit. It's 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 one of the best done it, scenes. It's it's like the most heartbreaking thing, and it's done so well. It's like it's so slick, yeah, and it just feels. It's just so one real. quick movement, and it's 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 really well done. Oh, and it's so sad because like. She starts. She's you, upset by you, it. You you really think someone's gonna believe her, and then they get killed. It it, it it's it's like, um, 
Uh, do you ever used to watch those Goosebumps episodes when you were younger? Not personally, uh, but I've heard of them, yeah. They used to always have, oh, he did it, but mum won't believe me. Oh, he's real, he's real, he's real. And the moral of the story would always be that the parents end up, ended up getting eaten or something like that. Oh, oh great, great. One <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like some, yeah, so that's very well done. And then I think someone sees the lady whose neck is gushing blood and the other lady holding a knife. <laughs> and, and, um, Basically, uh, Cecilia is arrested and taken to a mental, mental asylum. asylum. Ba- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she re- she what she does uh, is she's taken and Tom, who's a her lawyer attorney person. Yeah, uh, he comes and he is just it. We, we find out he's in on it. He knows what his brother's doing. Well, that's not until a bit. No, no, it's in the... Remember, he, he uh, talks to her in the asylum. It's it's quite a bit after, um... No, she, cause she goes to the asylum. There's, there's some stuff before. Um, Is there? She, uh, she first talks to James. Oh, um, yeah, she talks to James. And, and like, she, she says, begins to tell him, this... but she realises that the Invisible Man's in the room and he will kill James if she tells him. No, I don't think... I think it's just she, she knows he won't believe her and that he'll, like, kill someone else. If she tells she, him, because she couldn't, he could Yeah, he'll kill James. She says, um, "I can't tell you I now." I can't tell you because he's in the room, and I think that it's because James if, is there. Not not James. Uh, Adrian's there, and he'll kill either James or Sydney, like or someone she cares about. Like, if later. she tells, yeah, it, it it it's kind of like though. It's like. Cecilia is the puppet that's on the screen, and Adrian is Jim Henson playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a it's, it's a good scene, and then um, so then we meet. Then she goes to see Tim. Is it Tim or Tom? Tom. Tom. And uh, the, he, we find, and because he's a Adrian lawyer attorney person, and we find and... out he's in on it. And what he says is that he, she's pregnant with Adrian's child. And he said that he would discontinue her funds because she broke. She, the law. She's not mentally fit enough to keep them. Uh, yeah, get them. Um, yeah. So she's basically left really annoyed. But yeah, what and then oh, she snuck a fountain pen. No, well, yeah. Him. So she finds that she's she's pregnant with Adrian's child, which is it mentioned earlier. She did not want to be. She didn't want to have a child, and Adrian did. But she, so she took birth control. But it turns but out Adrian knew that and was t- he swapping them out. He swapped birth control for something else. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, ter- that's really creepy. It's not exactly explained what birth control is swapped for, but it's probably something to make her feel isolated. It was yeah. probably some kind of... I think it's maybe... Amir was just like, take jacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, birth control suddenly tastes delicious. <laughs> Mento. Mento. <laughs> so yeah, so she goes to a cell and she's like, "Well," and it turns out she got. She, she doesn't want to have the kids, so what she does? She she stole a fountain pen from Tom's bag, and she, she hid it in her room. And with she the blue tech, which she took from a tape, from a sign, and, and it's, she says, um, "I won't have your child," and she starts to stab herself in the wrist. And I think she but, probably what she did, she stabbed like slightly to the side of the wrist because she didn't want to kill herself. Actually, it's, it's a fake out. I, I I do think I I I strongly disagree. I thought that at that moment she just didn't want to give Adrian the satisfaction of. Well, I think she was kind of faking it and gonna let like gonna like that was what, her plan. Him. She was gonna fake yeah bait him and she because she knows he's not gonna let her die because he wants the kid. Yeah, who will that's also die. the whole reason that yeah. um she left. Well, I don't. I think it was just like he was being overly protective, and I think that's why he's still after her because uh, she has his child. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So she starts to attack herself, and then he suddenly reve- like jumps out, and kind of starts to grab her, and she stabs him with the pen. Yeah, she keeps on stabbing him, and she, she's on top of him, and and then it's a it's really just cool then effect when he pushes of him, like, her back. Yeah, and. A guard outside opens the door and asks what's going and on. And now there's like this really cool effect of um him like the camera's breaking and saying flashing. You might see, you see him like for a second, and it's kind of, it's yeah. very well done. And a guard comes it's... out and she runs. So she runs out the door. And then Adrian follows, and it's kind of this like just lo- it's like one long shot and of him just like 
ki- uh, basically killing uh, a bunch just guard after guard after guard. Well, when she first escapes, there's two guards grab her, and then Adrian just comes along and full on just murders all these guards. It's it's a bit and... long. It's it's a bit long. It's just like two guards I really die. Like it. I mean, it's it's well done. It's just like why are two guards just like perfectly timed coming out? Uh, well, I'm sure that yeah, because the first guard that came in. Uh, Adrian tasered him, and I'm sure that there's 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 some kind of precautionary alarm that he could have pressed at yeah. that time. Then there's probably as soon as these two guards come out, they probably looked at the CCTV, saw Cecilia running out. They saw thought, yeah. No. When they stopped, when they got beaten up, the other two came out and. I do brought... think it should have taken a little bit longer though, because they were. Pr- Truth is, they were probably in the f- in the staff lounge having a coffee. Right <laughs> yeah, they're like just that. like lazy security officers. <laughs> it's, it's it's just generic. Yeah. But... So um, then she runs out and it's right out in the parking lot and it's night and it's raining, and and I think it's it's another good scene where you see the Invisible Man because uh, the rain is sliding off him, and. Long, She's... long story short, after like a ch- kind of a chase scene through the throughout the cars, he grabs her by the throat, pins her against like a truck, and says, uh, "I can't hurt you, but I can hurt who you love." And uh, he says, "I'm going to kill the girl," and by that he means he'll he's going to go kill Sydney. And then, this is when a guy next to um, Cecilia, the, one, the guard comes round. Yeah, one of the and guards he comes sees around. the Invisible Man, because the Invisible Man isn't invisible anymore. I mean, at this point, I think anything. the Invisible Man, he knows, people know, there were security cameras in the thing, seeing how he beat up a bunch of people. He's, I think he's he's, got, he's kind of gone crazy now, and he's just like, it's all or nothing, and he's gonna go. He's, he's got a, his suit now is not invisible anymore, it's got, it's black, got black elements that keep on Yeah, kind of flashing, it's, it's, yeah. He's got like a uh, strobe lighting suit. Pe- people, people know he's he's real and like it's he, the game's up. He's gonna just gonna go so kill the skin. <laughs> he he realizes that it's now or never, and he doesn't even kill this guard. He just um he kicks the gun away. And he just yeah. gives him PTSD. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, I should not um, be laughing at that. I I know they're such horrible people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then. Invisible man runs off uh, with Cecilia chasing after him. Yeah, so he he drives away and uh, he goes. She ends up uh, taking this car. <laughs> like... And this is this man who just comes in out of a car. Oh. <laughs> and he was talking to his wife. Yeah. And then uh, she's just like, "Hello, Henry, are you still there?" And she's just like, "Cecilia's oh, like, he's I, fine. He's fine. I'm he's so fine. sorry. Cecilia's fine. Cecilia's like, he's fine. Bye." Um, yeah. So they they, they uh so invisible man Adrian. Gets yeah. there, and he starts messing with uh, Sydney stuff, and Sydney starts screaming, and then James and he strangle her. Yeah, and, and James her. James runs Cecilia in. Celia calls James and says, "Your daughter's th- in danger. Get to your house, pronto." And, and Jay- he he run he drives over. He's still like he's not sure, but he drives over, and there's this like horrible scene. It's just uh, the invisible man just beating down Adrian, like he like, and you can't see him, James. So, yeah, you can't see you can't see the invisible man. So it's like uh, there's a bit where like James on the floor and like, his blood's coming out of his nose. Oh, it, it it's disgusting. And you see his tie get picked up, but like, you can't see the hands are just tie hovering. And then like you see him like get his head fling around and like him drop again. It's it's horrible. And it's then like just like Sydney's in the corner like screaming and and then like Cecilia just kind of appears like superhero style and uh, shoots him. She well, she uses a fire extinguisher to see where he is. Yeah, she oh yeah, she uses a fire extinguisher and then shoots him twice. She pops him, and then <laughs> uh, he falls down. And this is this is the Scooby Doo moment. This is the when... yeah, Scooby Doo. It's like who's under the mask? And I'll tell you who is under the mask. It's dun, not dun, actually. Dun. Adrian. It's, it's Tom, not Adrian. Sinister name, isn't it? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, and so... then he really should have said, "I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a scene, and uh, it's just like um, her in police custody, and now everyone believes her. No, she was right. And a police a squad goes to this house, and they find Adrian like kidnapped in his own house. Yeah, and. And then uh, but she, Adrian she... lies and says, "Oh, I've been here for ages." Yeah, 
This and is not, I was not the Invisible Man. That was my brother. And like, <laughs> if she's assisting. She's assisting. It was. It wasn't Tom. Maybe Tom was there for a second, but he was Adrian. I. I promise you. And it, it's no one. No one really believes. Her. Everyone thinks. Look, you're safe now. You're safe. And it's it's a theme in this movie. Where people say like you're safe, you're safe, and she's like going, "No, I'm not. I he is still here." So then Cecilia decides that she will now she's gonna... change her name to Rambo. <laughs> she <laughs> hit solo. Yeah, she, uh... she 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 goes to Adrian's house for dinner, and it's kind of this cute smarmy thing that he's done. He's like, "I don't know what you wanted, so I I got everything. I got steak and sushi and blah blah blah." Um, and he's Oliver, he's, he's played by Oliver Jackson Cohen, and this is the actually the only like this is the only scene where we really get to see him act, and he's very good. Even at the beginning, you never got a full headshot. You, you, you um, saw him briefly, like that he ran up at the wood. That was it. He yelled a bit, and you don't really see him actually acting throughout the entire movie. But this scene is where you you properly see him acting. And- he he does a good job of trying to pretend, He's and a, she does a good and job she says, of pretending. Yeah. So what happens is she says, "I I I'll, I'll live with you fine. I want I know you want this child. If we're gonna start a family, I need you just to start it on um a truth." And Honestly. she says, "And it you see, uh, she's wearing a wire, which um James is connected to, and he doesn't yeah. get to. um and." Adrian doesn't realise, but he's he, he's still he's, it's, not going to give think, her the satisfaction of telling the truth. Yeah, it's just another part of the abuse. He says, I, I didn't do it. You know, my brother. She's like, I need you to tell me the truth. He's like, I didn't. I didn't. And for a second, I j- legit thought he didn't. Uh, mm, I mean, really? Not, like, not for like, a second, not for long, but like for a second. Like, did he maybe not do this? Like, I, I was certain. Um, he did. Then... She starts crying and asks to go to the bathroom to Yeah, she's like, to she's gonna clean my... Well, actually, no, what happens is the way she finds out it was him is he says, um, I know you do it. You'd be the last person to be surprised by this. Or something along those lines. I can't remember exactly. And um, yeah. he, he says the word surprise, which she kept saying to her. Like, there's another bit when he... Fight, before the fight in the kitchen, he said surprise. And then suddenly attacked her. And what happens is she... Um, she goes to the toilet, and then it's a scene from the CCTV camera perspective. Yeah, and you showing s- and you see Adrian. him, his arm like he's on his stiff. He takes up a knife, it's like stiff. His really arm's like he's fighting it, and then he slits his own throat. It's like a deep slit, I think. I can't remember exactly, but it seems like I feel like it's oh, it, it it's deep. The, the other one, um, when Emily kills herself, it it was really really subtle, and it was more like a yeah, yeah, yeah. one but line. That one is know. it's like drawn out, it's like it's like it's, two. It's, it's very jerky as well. It looks very like um, as if you had like a huge carving knife with loads of spikes. On it. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, yeah. So um, so, so suddenly um, like two, and then it's like five seconds later, Cecilia appears and starts like, oh my god, oh my god, what happened? It's like, and then she calls the, like ambulance. It's like he killed himself. Help me, blah blah blah. And then um, she looks up at the camera and moves out of like its range, sits down and like the facade's down, and she just looks at Adrian who's like dying and bleeding out on the floor, and she just kind of smiles at him, and I think, smiles at him. Yeah, and she just says, surprise! Surprise! Um, yeah, so she, so she leaves that, she leaves the house, and James runs up, and says, what happened? She says, he killed himself, there's a video security of it. Yes, he 100% killed himself. And, and then, he, he look, um... James looks down at a bag, and sees the invisible this suit in it and he he sees he knows she did it and but there's no way to prove it i mean technically it, there is people know he didn't she didn't like him i mean he could he could say spirit the cctv footage i mean like, forensics could see the knife prints on the, it, it, the he, suit she could get proven i think like it would not be difficult to prove it like she hated him here's the suit if you notice his movements are jerky add things up please um, but the thing is they had they they probably could have found proof inside the house that yeah Adrian was I mean the I think guy and... I think she could still go to jail for mur- the murder still it wouldn't murder <laughs> it wouldn't really be murder it would be, it no. would I mean it it she'd probably get a lighter sentence because of what happened but it's still murder so she'd still she'd probably, probably only get a couple of years because it was yeah. like it was pretty 
they would find out that she she was really badly treated, and there has been like murders where someone has been badly treated that's come to this point, and they've gotten lighter sentences because it's just not fair. Yeah, so, yeah. So then he says, uh, she said to him, "What she says? What did it sound like?" And he said, "Um, sound like he killed himself." And um, it just shows like he's on her side, and they're gonna they're not gonna tell anyone. And is they're just gonna go? She's there. Just that's gonna what's gonna happen. Yeah, she walks away and stares into the camera lens after she's walked. Well, she doesn't stare into the camera lens. She just like, stares kind of straight forward, and um, the wind's in her hair, and it's like a light blue, and it's kind of dusk, and it's like, it's the first point in the movie where like it seems like she is free. She's safe. She's free. It's yeah. And then the movie ends. Yeah. So this, uh, I I liked the movie a lot. I really liked it. What would you rate it out of ten? I I gave it a ten. <laughs> ten you, out of ten. It... Great movie. Great acting. Great writing. Yes. Okay, for me, I'd say for um plot point, I'd probably give it for plot. I'd give it a seven. There are a couple of plot holes. I mean, I, no, but I think they explain themselves. If you really, if you. Uh, Really think about it, and they kind of explain themselves. For suspense, I definitely a hundred percent give that a nine. Not a hundred percent, give it a nine. And for acting, I you have to give it a ten, dude. Like that, that was, the acting in this is very good. Oh, I'd I'd probably give it. I'd probably give it another nine. You just can't be pleased. I'm. Uh, <laughs> there still were a couple of moments. I don't. I. I don't know. I. It's you know. I'm, I'm not gonna argue with you on this. I'm, none is the best. I'm giving a Blumhouse film. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. What's wrong with Blumhouse? Fantasy Island. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. I can't talk. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um. No, I like this movie. I. I also like this movie. Uh. Yeah, definitely watch it if you haven't watched it and you listen to this. Even though we told you not to, uh, you, you should watch the movie beforehand. Definitely, you should have done that. But if you do choose to watch the movie, please make sure to watch it legally on one of the premium uh, rental services available, where we can watch films. Yeah, wa- the watch the movie. It's good. Just, just watch. It's a, it's a tenor on Virgin. Don't. Don't, don't don't be an idiot and watch it on some site. Dodgy websites. We know some of you do that. <laughs> we, we, we know people do that. Uh, and okay, so, um, yeah. I'm sorry that we have to go to so soon. Um, but, so again, I am Tommy. And I'm Luke. And you can contact us at cfilespodcast at gmail.com where you can give us feedback and your opinion on the movie. Next week, we'll be reviewing Christopher Nolan's 2008 movie, The Dark Knight. This was the C-Files podcast, and we will see you next week.